Some really exciting key features of this build are taken care of in this episode of Building Christophsis. Over the last couple of weeks, I've built a bunch of vehicles, I've made bridges, I've worked on the buildings, I've installed lighting, and you guys are gonna see all of that in this progress update. But before we get to all that, let's start out with a quick figure haul for the mock. So to start out with here, we have 32 B1 battle droids. These came from Blackwell Bricks, and he also sent me these really cool uh, Separatist and Republic logo flags that I should be able to use in this build, so I'm excited about that. I probably still need to buy more battle droids than this, and even though this is quite a few and I've got about 100 in storage, I'm gonna have to get even more than that because these battle droids moved in formation in this battle, so they were all clumped together pretty well. I'll have to see where I'm at though when I get into figure placement a little bit later down the line. I also got three more super battle droids from a seller on Bricklink. I picked up this clone gunner for one of my AV-7 cannons, and I also got this really cool looking clone lieutenant recently. I think he'll be a great addition to the battle and should really stand out. And last but not least, we have this clone commander that was sent to me by my friend Grinding Bricks on Instagram. Huge shout out to him, and this guy is definitely making it into the final battle. One of the main things I wanted to make sure I got sorted during this episode was vehicles. I'm going completely custom for the vehicles on this mock, which means that I have a lot of parts that I need to order if I want to do this right. So I headed over to Brick Vault's website and I bought some instructions. If you like building custom models and you like saving money, you can use my code FIREBIRD15 to get 15% off your order. After getting my instructions, I placed a ton of Bricklink orders for different parts that I needed for the vehicles and the rest of the build. Sorting all this stuff out took a while, but I'm really grateful for some friends who were able to come over and help me sort through everything. The only custom build that I bought that wasn't from Brick Vault was the M5 Builds gunship. LEGO hasn't made a Playscale Republic gunship since 2013, so getting them on the secondary market costs upwards of $250 or even $300. This gunship can be pieced together for somewhere between $140 and $180, and I like the design of it quite a bit more. So it was a no-brainer to go for this one since I wanted a gunship included in the mock. I love the details on this build. I think it's super cool that the doors are actually brick built, and the model is a whole is very smooth and there aren't too many studs that are visible. Next up is the AV7 cannon from Brick Vault, and I think the final model looks fantastic. It's much bigger than the LEGO version, and I think it's going to look great on the Republic side of the battle. I got two of them for this build, but I only built one of them because my wife built the other to help me save a little bit of time. Next up is the Armored Assault Tank. This build is super detailed, I love the color scheme, and it's accurate to minifigure scale, just like all the other builds in this video. It's got some cool building techniques used, and I think the final model looks awesome. I bought enough parts to make two of these as as well and I built one and my friend Alec built the other one. I may get more of them depending on how much space I have left on the battlefield, but that'll have to wait until I get a little bit further into things. Last but not least is the custom ATRT. It's much smaller than the models that LEGO makes, but it's accurate to minifigure scale, and I think it looks great. I'm definitely buying at least two more of these to include in the mock. If you want to watch a more in-depth video comparing these custom builds to the official LEGO ones, you can click this link at the top right of the screen now, or check it out on the end screen of this video. Alright, now it's time to make some serious progress on those main skyscrapers. My friend Dylan tiled off the underside of two of the skyscrapers while we were hanging out the other day. After that, I decided it was time to start adding some damage detail into the buildings. I built up a full floor section of a building leaving one side open, and then I started building from the top down leaving an open section for broken glass. I added this floor section to the top of the center build, and then I installed a plate with some black tiles on it to cover up the opening in the side of the building. At this point, I have two buildings that are five stories tall, and it had been my plan to add some pedestrian bridges between the two buildings at this level. I also thought these would be some great sections to show some battle damage. So I started building doors for each of the bridges, and once I got all of those in place, I started working on a broken bridge section coming off of the build over the battle. I've been very excited to get to this point of the build because detail work is my favorite type of mock building. I had come up with a prototype for what my bridge structures were going to look like, so it was nice to have that starting point going into this. I extended some plates off the side of the building and then just started building around that. I really love this technique of using droid arms with hose pieces and bars to create railings around a bridge. And as I was building, I had the idea to have a chunk of the bridge falling off the side but still being attached to that handrail. I had to mess with it a little bit to make sure it could support the weight of the chunk I was trying to hang off of it, but I think it ended up turning out pretty good. Next, it was time to move on to the main bridge in the center of the build. Since I had my prototype figured out, this wasn't too difficult, but as I started getting into it further, I realized that I was going to have to commit to some minifigure placement here. I wanted to tile off the surface of the bridge, but I knew I was going to need to leave some studs for minifigures to stand on. So I pulled out my figures and I started placing them and then removing them when I needed to add tiles underneath. 
I also wanted to make sure I was going to be able to transport this to Brickworld pretty easily, so I made this design in such a way that you can take off the top section of the bridge and it's not actually connected to the support. It mainly rests on two supports coming out from the sides of the buildings by just a couple of studs. And then the middle support is mostly there for the looks. I didn't necessarily have this planned out in the first place, but this bridge design was really going to come in handy in a second here for something that I hadn't even thought about. It was at this point in the build that I decided it was probably time to start tackling something that I'd been putting off. I placed an order for a bunch of lighting components and I started wiring things up. Ideally, I'd like to have just one plug coming off the back of this build and everything else is wired up so I don't have to worry about plugging a bunch of things in or a rat's nest of cables. But the problem with this is I need to transport it so I can't just run wires everywhere and leave it in some unorganized fashion. I have to be able to connect and disconnect cables at certain points. I ran some wires up through the center building and then found that I could actually run wires underneath the bridge to get power over to the second building. These lights will unplug easily for transport and having the cables run on the underside of the bridge makes them basically invisible. Now that I had power running into the mock, it actually got me excited to start working on an explosion. I was planning on running an identical bridge between the middle building and the building on the left, but I decided that it'd be pretty cool if the bridge was in the middle of being blown up right in the center. So I got back to building my bridge design, I made the exact same support at the bottom and I built out the main bridge section but this time I only built it to be about half as long as the other one. I then started building chunks of the bridge and using mixel joints to position them in different angles as if it was being blown up. After that I started grabbing a bunch of translucent orange and red dish pieces and effect pieces. I ran LEDs through everything and attached it to a flicker effects board. And again on this side of the build I had to commit to some minifigure placement. So I got everything into position and this is how the explosion looks. I'm really happy with how this looks and it just makes me all that much more excited to get into crafting the main battle scene. I'm feeling very happy with where progress is at for this mock at this point. I think this should be done just in time for Brickworld and I'm very excited to finally have some lighting in here. I think that with all the wiring, it was definitely a challenge to get the system down, but I pretty much have things figured out for what I wanna do with lighting for the rest of the build. So that means I can continue making these skyscrapers taller. And I've changed up my idea a little bit. Initially, I was gonna have three buildings that were 10 stories tall each, but I think what I'm actually going to go for is these two buildings being 12 stories tall, and then having this building just be six stories tall. And I'd like to build in some really detailed building damage into the top of this building over here, basically to make it look like half of this building has completely been taken out. I think it'd also be pretty fun to add some flickering lights in here to make it look like the power is all buggy and stuff. But I'm really happy with the way the bridges are looking. I think it adds a ton of detail to this build. And these vehicles are super awesome. I think they're really gonna add so much to the entire battle. All that to say though, I clearly don't have enough vehicles to fill out this build yet. So I'm thinking I'm probably gonna be adding in two snail tanks back here. I have all the parts that I need to make at least one minifigure scale octopara droid that's going to go right in the middle here. And if I have extra space, I may end up making two more of those as well. We'll have to see where all of that lands though, because with the timeline that I'm on currently, every time I place parts orders, I have to wait a week for things to show up. And as we get closer and closer to Brickworld, I run shorter and shorter on the amount of shipping time I have and then build time on the other side of parts arriving. There's still an incredible amount of work to do on this build, but the vision that I have for it is finally starting to come to life and it's really cool to see it in front of me. I'm really looking forward to getting these buildings finalized so I can just focus on detail. I'll be focusing on mock updates more frequently on the channel leading up to Brickworld because this is going to be my main project between now and then. So subscribe so you make sure you don't miss out on that. And once again, if you want to get 15% off of Brick Vault instructions for any of these vehicles and so many more models, you can use my code FIREBIRD15 to get that discount. Check out one of these videos on screen now to keep you entertained in the meantime. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I hope you have a good one.